Hi, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it. And this week we're going to be celebrating me getting a green screen by learning how to make some box shadows. The box shadow is a super cool property that can do a lot of nice subtle effects that can just really make your designs stand out and be a little bit nicer. Or you can also use some sort of hacky stuff with them as well to do stuff you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Instead of covering all of this in one big long video though, I'm going to break it up into three different videos. In the first video, we're going to be looking at how the box shadow property actually works. Uh, the, you know, the values that we can give it and different stuff we can do with it to make sure you really understand what's going on. In video number two, we're going to be taking a look at how to actually make box shadows look good uh, to avoid things like we see behind me right now and to uh, look at examples and ways to make box shadows just not ugly because box shadows while they're cool are maybe one of the easiest ways to make your design just look like crap if you don't use them properly. In the third video we're looking at three hacks that we can use with the box shadow property and they're just different ways that are going to make stuff look awesome and uh, avoid extra markup and stuff like that but that's a little while away. We're starting off today just on learning the basics so let's jump right into that. Box shadow isn't a complicated property, but there are lots of parts to it. So I'm going to dive into all the values we can place here, discussing how they work and some important details on each one. And then we'll look at how we can apply multiple shadows. Now box shadow is a bit of a weird property because it accepts between two and six values. We're going to start with two and we'll work our way up from there. So here I have a box that is here. I have some other styles going on to set this up, but they don't matter too much for the, this video, but this is on CodePen, so you can always go and check out the link to that. It's in the description below um, if you want to see the finished version of this and all my other code that is hiding up top. Um, so on here, we're going to add a box shadow. So the property is like that, just a hyphenated uh, box shadow. And as I mentioned, we have to give it at least two values. So the first two have to be numbers. So I'm going to do 20 pixels and 20 pixels. And look at that. I already have a really nice and sort of cool stylized shadow. It actually looks pretty good right now. Um, now these values can be uh, M's, they can be REMs, they can be um, pretty much any number value you want. The only thing you can't do is percentages. As percentages, they won't work, just so you know. Uh, so let's just go back to the 20 pixels and 20 pixels because I thought that looked pretty nice. Um, now what these are is this first number is the horizontal offset and the second number is the vertical offset. So I'm just going to switch this one over to zero. And you're going to see it's only moving down now. So it's moved down 20 pixels, but the left and right is at zero. And if I make this 100 pixels, it's going to shoot off more to the right. And then 50 pixels and it's 50 pixels to the right. And we can do the same thing with this, 200, and it will move down 200 pixels from where it originally was. And if you wanna move things up or to the left, you just have to make these negative values, and then you can have them up and to the left. Uh, so yeah, that's how that works. Let's shift this back to 20 and 20. And that's the first. So again, this is the horizontal offset, and the second one here is the vertical offset. The third property here is another number, so I'm going to use 20 once again. Now that's looking a lot more like a shadow. As you can probably guess, this value is the blur. This is the blur radius, or the size of the blur. When it's set to 20 pixels like this, what it means is it will go from solid color, so right here, or wherever it was a solid color, and it's going to take 20 pixels from being solid black to where the blur ends, and it's going to be a gradual decline uh, in opacity as you go along. Now you can make the blur as big as you want and it's going to make it softer and softer and softer. At one point it would get too big and it's, you know, you're not really getting the effect you're probably after. Um, the one thing, unlike the vertical and horizontal offsets, we cannot make the blur a negative value. It just won't work. It does not accept negative values here. You can have a zero. That's the default. That's what we had before. And any positive number will work. And just like before, if I want to do this in M's or REM's, I can easily do that as well. Now the fourth property I can add in here, let's just put that back to 20. Um, I'm going to do another 20 here, and so I'm on my fourth property. Now this is an often misunderstood one, and what it is is it's the spread. What it pretty much means is take 20 pixels and then start the blur. So how far are we going before we start to create a blur? To help understand what's actually going on here, 
I'm going to take this off and let's do a zero. So zero, zero. So I have no horizontal and no vertical offset. I'm going to put a blur of 20 pixels. So you can see that I have my blur coming on there and I'm going to add a spread of 20 pixels. It's pretty much making my blur start further out. So it's pushing everything away a little bit and then it's starting the blur. So it's pushing it 20 pixels in all directions. I can make that 200 and it will get much bigger. So it's going to go 200 pixels and then I get my 20 pixels of blur. Now one thing unlike this property which cannot take a negative, this one can take a negative. Um, and you can see now my blur is there, but it's really, really subtle because it's been pulled underneath my box a little bit more. And the negative value on the spread here can be very important and very useful for some, uh, once you start getting into some more advanced stuff, sometimes you will be using uh, negative spreads from time to time. Finally, we can add a color, but there are a few things to know about color before we play with it. First off, if you haven't put a color, you'll notice right now mine is black. It's possible yours isn't because the default is not black. It's actually matching the color property, and I bet you didn't know that. If I come on here and I do color red, my shadow will actually change to red. So it's always inheriting that, except, well, not exactly. As useful as this could be, don't rely on it. For some reason, Safari defaults the color of a shadow to transparent. So far is really quickly becoming the new IE, everyone. Um, so why they're different, I don't know, but just know that if you do want a red shadow, um, what you might want to use is the nice little current color property on here, which does what, that's sort of what the default is in here, but it's going to make sure that it's default in all browsers. Um, so just to show you, if I change this over to blue now, it will change to blue current color grabs you can use this anywhere it's not only for box shadows um, you can use that you know I could use it for my border too just to show you what it's doing border five pixels solid current color and actually we should take off this so we can see what's happening and now my border is on there and it's the current color and if I change this to green so it, it, it uses the color of what I'm doing here but we're not here to look at current color we're here to learn about box shadows so instead of current color I can just write in the color I want here so I can put red and now I get a nice or not very nice uh, red shadow and of course uh, what you can also do on this is use RGBA values or HSLA and so I could come on and do a 0, 0, 0 0.5 and that will just give me a bit more of a subtle um, drop shadow because it has some transparency in there and if we bring this off no more spread um, it's a little bit nicer now the very last thing that we can use another value that we can do and this one actually has to go all the way at the beginning here it's called inset and I'll do that and you'll see what it is right away it moves the shadow to the inside of the box instead of the outside of the box one thing that's important to know about an inset shadow it will always be on top of the background color but under the content so the, sh the inset shadow always goes on uh, behind any text or images you might have, but it will always cover your background because if not, you wouldn't really see it. And that can be uh, nicely used. You can see here, it makes it look like the, um, this is sort of cut. There's a hole in it and it's, so this is showing behind my original background. So the inset, you don't see it used very often. It can be used in really nice, fun and creative ways um, to get some nice effects. Now one thing that's important is that, as we saw at the start, the only required properties are the vertical and horizontal offset. After that, you can skip the blur and spread and just put a color. So I could write this. Let's just erase what we have here and make a new box shadow. So I can do a box shadow of 20 pixels, 20 pixels red, and it's going to work. Um, but what I can't do is I can't skip the blur and put in a spread because they're all number values. I can skip the inset because the inset just de doesn't default to anything, but if I add the inset to the beginning, I'm just skipping it if not. Um, but yeah, we can skip the blur and the, um, the offset if I want. So I can do vertical, horizontal, blur, skip the offset, which will stick to zero as a default, and then put my color. Now one thing that's fun to do is to apply multiple box shadows. So let's change this over to black for the moment. And 
one thing you can't do though is I cannot come here and do a box shadow and do say 30 pixels 30 pixels red because the red one is going to win uh, the way the cascade works this property is going to get taken off and this one is going to get used instead so instead of trying to do it this way I'm going to delete that we're going to I'm just going to expand this out for the time being and we just have to comma separate them so now I can do 30 pixels 30 pixels 30 pixels red and now as you can see I have a black and a red shadow and you can add as many in here as you want and to make it a little bit easier for yourself in general you can put each one on a new line so after the comma you can just do it like that we can put a comma and add in more so let's play around with this a little bit and come up with something a bit more interesting say we do 100 pixels 100 pixels 100 pixels red then we can go 100 pixels negative 100 pixels and I'm going to illustrate something important here with this uh, example as well we'll do negative 100 negative 100 100 green and negative 100 100 100 purple um, so what I wanted to illustrate with this is a we can have multiple box shadows the second one is how they order and overlap each other. The first one here, um, the first one that I put is the one that's on top of all the other ones. So I have my big red one and then my blue one. Then I have my green one. So my green one is actually being hidden a little bit by this blue one. And then I have my purple last one over here that's getting hidden under everything else. Um, so it's just important to know and maybe if I make my blurs a bit bigger on this it will illustrate it even more. Um, but just the red one is always going to be on top of everything else then the blue one then the green one and then the purple one all the way down over there at the end and there you have the box shadow property so i hope that helps further your understanding of what the box shadow property is how it works and the different values you can give it and uh, sort of the way you might want to go about using it a little bit if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you have any comments, any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much to my patrons who help support this channel and make all of this content possible. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.